Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be checking um, White's other rare response um, after Knight C6, and that's B4. Um, unlike C3, which we looked at in the, the last video, um, White isn't actually threatening to play Knight D5 anymore um, because of the standard Queen D8 to H4 to C4 manoeuvre, and therefore Black's under a, a lot less pressure. So in the last video after C3, I think we looked at all that D and Knight D4, which is quite interesting. Which is also actually interesting here. We'll look at that in a minute. But because of this um, lack of urgency for Black, he actually has extra options. So for example, A5 is one interesting move. Um, and just to say before, as I said just a minute ago, Knight D5 isn't really a threat because of this manoeuvre. And Black's getting lots of play coming into C4, F3, G4. Um, so he's not. That's not bad for Black at all. Um, instead of Knight D5, oops, sorry. Instead of Knight D5, White has a few other options. Um, I'm not going to analyse it too much because I think Knight D4 I'm going to take as being the main line. But um, this this A5 move is just sort of saying, okay, you're not, you haven't got any threats, so I'll just play like quite a useful move. If you don't do anything, I'll probably take on B4. Uh, he's got threatening on a2, knight into b4, so it's just a sort of waiting move, but with a, uh, you know, some some ideas behind it. Uh, knight h5, maybe it could be answered by knight d4. Um, obviously, this can't be taken because of queen h4. I'll just play on the board, queen h4, and then into d4. Um, so I don't think knight h5 is too much of a problem. Um, what I could try maybe swapping the queen off like this. And then play knight d5. Um, but I think black gets some counterplay with knight f6, threatening to come into e4. Uh, maybe white could try a4, basically taking the sting out of a takes b4 before it gets played. But this isn't going to be threatening. Black's got lots of options. Maybe you could play knight d4, or d5, or even take it anyway. It's not really threatening that kind of play from white. Um, so that's probably a move I'll let you investigate a little bit more if you want to play that. This move is quite rare B4 so it might be worth doing something like that without any theory behind it. Um, so yeah, okay. another option that black has is D5, I said a minute ago. Um, again I'm not going to go into this one too much. Um, white has quite a lot of, lot of possibilities. Um, which usually get met with standard counters from black. Uh, bishop b2 is probably the most natural move. Um, and then black's got a choice. You can play e5. Quite an interesting move. Uh, knight d4 again. It's pretty good for. Well, I say pretty good. It's perfectly okay for black. So again, if you want to look at that one, you can. I think it's perfectly fine. I've done some analysis on it. I haven't found anything that strong for white. But we'll take knight d4. Uh, I think it's probably quite easy to remember as you play it against knight c3 as well. Um, in this variation, so in the c3 line we had c takes and d takes. And after e takes, black had a... Um, I'll just do a quick recap of that. After c3, knight d4. We took c takes as being the main line. And if e takes, knight f6 gave black lots and lots of play. And the same's true in this position. After b4, knight d4, e takes is perhaps quite risky because of knight f6. Um, so, well, black could play slightly less ambitiously with d5, but which is probably okay for black. But if anything, slightly better for white. But after knight f6, it's really quite critical already. Um, so you're coming in, threatening to come into e4, winning immediately, and it's not very easy to find a good move for white. Uh, knight g6 is probably the best move. Um, bishop c5 moving this and gaining a tempo by hitting f2. Uh, d4 of course if you just take this then knight e4 wins on the spot. So d4 is forced. And now knight g4 or knight e4 is possible as well I suppose. Knight g4 and then taking on g6. And black's this knight gives black quite a lot of play. 
uh, maybe d takes c5 hitting d6 uh, d5 is possible I think d6 is maybe more interesting because it keeps this long diagonal this long diagonal open so his bishop can sometimes maybe come to b7 uh, and this position is interesting it's quite uh, I think I'd prefer to be black actually with this quite good knight white's up you know a piece for a pawn but it's not that's not the most important thing in the position in my opinion um, so I wouldn't as white I wouldn't recommend playing e takes uh, d4 I think probably the best move is queen h5 and after queen h5 g6 is forced um, swapping off the queens if f6 here which is a very bad move knight d5 is very strong for white so black's pretty much forced into swapping the queens off and now taking this knight on d4 is probably a wise move um, black's got a couple of interesting options here um, which I think give him a decent game um, one of them is the natural move d5 I think following up with e5 and black's got good set good um, central control and white's you know knight on f4 slightly misplaced so being the slight material down I don't think it's that much of a problem for black he's got decent compensation the other move is quite interesting is b5 um, just aiming to put the bishop on this long diagonal and cause white some inconvenience and then after this bishop b7 just ignoring this bishop bishop g7 and it castles queenside it's quite quite interesting in my opinion quite interesting I think um, so yeah b5 or d5 I think give black a decent game and that's pretty much all you need to know about this uh, about this b4 move if you don't like either of those lines then as I said before a5 and d5 are both interesting and um, worth investigating okay so in the next video we're going to be looking at the more the more meaty subject of bishop b5 which is the main variation in the whole of one knight h3 okay see you then